Why are there quakes along the Mississippi River? Geologists have many theories, but do not know why quakes occur around New Madrid, Missouri. They do agree that the geology of the Mississippi Valley is unique because of real foot rift and the Mississippi embayment area. Real foot rift developed 1.2 billion years ago. A rift is a system of fractures or faults in the Earth's crust that develop when crustal plates pull apart. When real foot rift formed, semi-molten material from the Earth's mantle pushed up into the lower crust. As the material cooled, it became more dense and sank into the mantle. As it sank, the upper crust sagged and formed real foot basin. The rift basin filled with river sediments and is now known as the Mississippi embayment area. The recent earthquake activity in the region may be caused by the weight of the sediments putting intense stress on the faults. There are many fault zones within the rift area. These faults mark the boundaries of the sunken crust of the real foot rift. Geologists refer to the area as the New Madrid Seismic Zone. The New Madrid Earthquake Zone encompasses northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, southwest Kentucky, and western Tennessee. The diamonds indicate the origins of epicenters of the 1811 and 1812 quakes. In December 1811, the Mississippi Valley erupted the first in a series of the strongest quakes known in eastern North America. Two quakes occurred in December 1811. The third hit in January 1812, while the February 1812 quake became known as the Hard Shock. The four major quakes were followed by secondary shocks, which were as severe as the major quakes. Between the quakes and shocks, the ground continuously moved. A Louisville engineer counted a total of 1,874 shocks between December 1811 and March 1812. Two quakes occurred on December 16th, one at 2.15 a.m., the other at 8.15 a.m. The quakes centered between New Madrid and the Big and Little Prairie Settlements. The quakes completely destroyed the prairie settlements. The December quakes measured 8.5 and 8.3 on the Richter scale. The fault developing from the quake ran 28 miles long and 18 miles wide. Over half of the United States felt the quake's vibrations. The strongest quake known in eastern North America occurred on the 7th of February, 1812. This quake measured 8.8 .8 on the Richter scale. The fault developing from the quake measured 46 miles long and 28 miles wide. People in New England and as far south as South Carolina felt the shocks of the quake. The February 12th quake epicenter was so close to New Madrid that it completely destroyed the town. People fled in terror from their falling dwellings. The ground around New Madrid cracked in all directions. Circular holes were created in the earth where sand, water, and coal were pushed to the surface by the pressure of the quake. When the sand burst through the surface, it created the sound of artillery firing in a distant thunder. This phenomenon continued for almost 50 years. The New Madrid sank 12 feet from its original height on the river bank and eventually disappeared. The area surrounding New Madrid also received damage. Streams, lakes, and ponds were forced up, causing the water to flood in the surrounding area to a depth of 3 feet. Other areas sank as much as 6 feet. Fissures opened up, creating barriers of, for fleeing inhabitants. A fissure is a crack in the earth that varies in depth and length. Some inhabitants hung onto trees that spanned the fissures so as not to fall in. The quakes disrupted the flow of the Mississippi River. The river had become a major highway for travel, and several boats were on the river when the quakes hit. More people died on the river than on land. Banks along the river fell in large columns from 5 to 30 acres at once. Any boat moored along the banks was instantly destroyed along with those on board. The fallen trees and debris caused hazardous navigation on the river for years. The sudden impact of the earth, trees, and other debris in the river created giant swells. 
The swells produced huge tidal waves where the waters of the Mississippi were seen to rise up like a wall in the middle of the stream and then suddenly rolling back beat against either bank. People along the river described this event as the river running backwards. Channels and islands, number 32 and 94 in the Mississippi River, disappeared during the quakes. The stretch of the river south of the first Chickasaw Bluffs lost most islands and channels. Others described the river as pouring into underground holes. This was caused by holes of fissures opening up the bottom of the river. If the fissures were deep enough, the water rushing into the hole created a whirlpool, sucking any boat in the area down into the river. Observers called these holes sucks, and many were sighted near Madrid, New Madrid during the February quake. Two falls were created by the forcing up of the riverbed, creating barriers where the river flowed over it. The first falls developed by island number 10, the second eight miles below New Madrid. Observers described the falls as being equal to the flow of the falls of the Ohio near Louisville, a 23-foot descent over two miles. Many lost their lives trying to navigate the falls. Within days, the falls were worn away by the force of the water. Real Foot Lake, located in western Tennessee, was created by the lands, sinking during the earthquake. The quake uplifted the southern section of the lake 10 to 25 feet above the level of the existing land. This blocked the passage of streams and creeks forming the lake. The lake measured 18 miles long, 5 miles wide, and 5 to 20 feet deep. An 1811 size quake of 8.5 on the Richter scale would cause extensive damage to the Mississippi River Valley in Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, and Arkansas if it happened today. Southern Illinois, Western Kentucky, South Central Indiana, and St. Louis would also receive land and building damage. Most damage would be caused by the liquefaction of the ground surface. Liquefaction is caused by the action of seismic waves in the groundwater in soft sediments which causes ground to flow like jello. Liquefaction induced ground failure caused most of the damage in the 1811 and 1812 quakes. Liquefaction creates landslides, ground fissures and sand blows and the disappearance of islands. Land closest to the epicenter would receive the greatest damage. Bridges over the Ohio and Mississippi would be destroyed or badly damaged by the ground fissures and warping, much like the damage to the Oakland Bridge in the 1990 earthquake. Roads from Cairo, Illinois to Memphis, Tennessee would be impassable. When will the area receive the next big quake? Geologists cannot predict when the next quake will occur. However, a 6.0 quake has a 60 3% chance of hitting by 2020. A quake over 7.0 has only a 1% chance. To learn more about earthquake preparedness in your area, contact your local or state emergency and disaster agency. Check to determine if your house is quake-proof and will survive the next shock.